course Candyman Blues by Mississippi John Hurt. This is a song that I have been showing students for years and it has a lot of unusual things in it as far as finger picking songs go. It keeps a steady bass but not always the way you expect it to go. Sometimes the bass notes are what I would refer to as upside down where the higher bass note is happening on the stronger beat of the measure. Unusual but he does it all the time. He also uses some unusual bass notes on chords further up the neck using open bass notes that are not necessarily, particularly not necessarily, the root of the chord they're playing. This is a common thing in blues stuff and really part of what gives it its particularly uh, unique sound. So in the lesson that we have at Totally Guitars, this is um, all addressed, We've got tablature to it. If you'd like to check out what is going on with Mississippi John Hurt and get started, come visit us there. But I'll give you a quick, quick, a couple of quick hints about the first thing that I like people to do with this, with this song, and that is you have to get used to playing an A chord with your first finger flattened out across the second, third, and fourth strings, and then a high A on the top sometimes. We don't need it in the beginning. And at the very beginning of the song, we start with the sixth string in the bass on beat four of a previous measure or a, a pickup measure, and then hit an A in the bass alone, and then on the second beat, pinch that A with the, the third string. And then we, then we start alternating the bass in this upside down manner. So we hit two bass notes, the fifth string twice, but on the second one I pinch the melody note with it. Then I move to the fourth string in the bass, and then hammer on from C sharp to D, the second to third fret on the second string, while at the same time hitting the open A in the bass. Now this is a move that a lot of students have a lot of trouble with, doing a hammer on, and hitting a bass note at the same time, it's really worth working on because you're going to hammer on. You need to make sure you hear that. You also need to make sure you hear this at the same time, together. You've got to really time that left hand hammer to be right with the bass and not do it. The natural tendency in something like this is to do it too early. And the reason for that is your left hand is used to moving early so that your right hand can play a note at the right time. So when people try hammer-ons, especially with bass notes, that's a lot of times what happens. And what you need to happen is this, you have to wait and make sure that that pound lands right with the bass note. This is one of the, again, the biggest problem that students have when they're first working on hammer-ons. Now the second problem that happens when they're trying those, if, once you get it to where it's at the right time, you're going to want to pinch it because your ear is used to hearing when your ear hears two things it thinks it has to do two things your brain tells your fingers I have to do two things so you really have to avoid re-striking that note with your finger as you're hammering it on and again your brain is hearing two things happen you don't want to do it you've got to practice just go very slowly let that note ring keep this finger out of the way and then just play that bass note so Hammer-ons that land with bass notes, again, are a technique and an obstacle to a lot of people, but this is a great song to practice that with. So, continuing into the next measure, we have a regular hammer-on, pinching the fourth string and the second, and then hammering on the third. Now, that's a much easier one because it's pinched and then hammered. It's kind of the other type of hammer-on. Back to the fifth in the bass, and then the second string at the second fret, and then another bass note on the fourth, and then the last bass note. So those two measures, again, the tablature is available in the lesson at the site, but if you want to just get working on those two measures, I'll talk you through it one more time. On beat four, we have a low E. On beat one of the next measure, we just have the fifth string open A. On beat two of that measure, we have an A in the bass on the fifth string pinched with the third string. On beat three, we have the bass note on the fourth string, hit with your thumb. Now we have that hammer on, strike the second string at the second fret, and hammer it on to the fifth string in the bass, and then another note played on the and of that beat. So that measure very slowly is this. Now 
now the second measure starts with a pinch on the fourth and second strings, hammering on the D again, fifth string in the bass, and then that D comes off for the C sharp, and then the fourth string in the bass, and then the sixth string in the bass. Here are those two measures, again, slower, and maybe you can write them down, because I know we can't attach files to this and, and get them through. But again, you can check it out at the, in the complete lesson. And the next two measures are the same. With two bass notes added in, a C sharp and a C, heading into B in the bass, which is part of the next chord. So anyway, if you'd like to see the whole lesson on Candyman, Candyman Blues by Mississippi John Hurt. Come check us out at TotallyGuitars.com.